How's it going guys? It's your Dave here and it's time for episode number 10 of Mikael Pedersen BA Pro Series. Uh, last we left off we had just beat the Chicago Blackhawks in five games and now we are up against the St. Louis Blues in the Western Conference Finals. It's going to be the battle of the 6th and 8th seeds and also a 6th seed has made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and that is the New York Islanders and they will be playing the Buffalo Sabres. So a couple of surprise teams, uh, not really any teams that made it far this year. Uh, I think the furthest they got in real life, St. Louis and New York Islanders the first round, so nothing too special. But anyways, we'll uh, jump into the stats for the opposing team. Berglund leads their team with goals. McDonald with assists, uh, seven and eight respectively. McDonald's with a plus seven, uh, plus minus, and Chris Drew with 15 penalty minutes. Uh, for the offense, defense, and goalies uh, ratings. Four and a half, four and a half, and three and a half, respectively, for the Oilers, and then four and a half, four and four and a half for St. Louis. But uh, that four and a half goalies is due to that uh, tandem of Halak and uh, Elliott. So it will be tough to overcome the goalies. And with that, we'll jump into the first game here against the St. Louis Blues. We're in St. Louis. Uh, should definitely be a good series, although they're not not the highest seeds. But these teams have been entertaining so far. And to start off here. In the first period, Pedersen in his first shift shoots. It's wide, but Hemsky circles around the net. Pedersen frees himself out, shoots, and it's in. And with that, Pedersen is able to put the Oilers up one nothing. Later on, Pedersen on the bench, and Sabaka puts it away. A little tough to see uh, from that angle, but uh, here's a little better uh, view. Just a little rebound shot there, and Dubnik lets that one in. Later in the sim, uh, the Oilers put it away at the start of the second period, and we go up two to one. But later on, halfway through the second, somehow a mix-up and Berglund puts away the loose puck to make it 2-2. Two to two. We'll jump to the third midway through. And Chris Stewart ends up picking up the loose puck and puts it away to make it 3-2. to two. And unfortunately, that's how the game would finish as the Oilers couldn't come back. The St. Louis Blues hold on and they win their first game 3-2 and go up in the series 1-0. Pedersen finishes the goal. Uh, minus one rating and four shots in game number one. So anyways, let's take a look at the playoff tree real quick. St. Louis, once again, is up one nothing, and the Isles are up one nothing. So the six seeds lead right now, an upset happening in the Eastern Conference. Jump into game two here. Already down one nothing. The Oilers need a win to uh, head back to Edmonton Tide. If they go down 2 nothing, they are in uh, unmarked territory. Well, they haven't even lost, but anyways, they'll start off with a goal here to make it one nothing. St. Louis will tie it up in the sim. 1-1, then Nuge would get a goal to make it 2-1 in the sim, and just before the first period ends, Dagasini with a breakaway makes a nice move, and that puts it past uh, Dubnik to make it 2-2, and just at the start of the third, Pedersen's able to get a, get the pass and beats Halak to make it 3-2, a nice goal there by Pedersen. And finally, a couple uh, seconds later, basically, Pedersen gets the pass back from Hemsky, walks in, shoots, tries faking it, and he puts it away to make it 4-2 and with that the Oilers would be able to win that game and head back to Edmonton with a 1-1 series tie. Miko Pedersen with two goals, seven shots and a plus one rating for the first start performance in that game. So as you can see with the playoff tree, both series are now tied 1-1 so it's just going to get even more interesting as we go on. Game three now we're back in Edmonton and with the series tied 1-1, Edmonton needs to get a win here to uh, be able to Basically go back to St. Louis knowing they'll come back to Edmonton at least uh, once if St. Louis does win in the next two games. Anyways, we'll start off here and uh, mix up in front of the net and somehow it would be made 2 nothing. Play our view there with a the goal after the first goal in the sim. And then uh, here, Oshi comes out of the box and he's wide open and he is not going to make a mistake with a glitch goal from a computer. I don't think I've seen that yet before. And that would make it 2-1 to one later on though. It'd be uh, Pedersen getting the pass, a uh, nice chance for St. Louis back there. But he makes a nice move around Shattenkirk and beats the keeper to make it 3-1 to one just before the second period ends. A solid uh, goal there by Pedersen. Later on, Pedersen brings it into the zone. He's rocked. He's not liking that, but Hems, he's going to like this because Smith puts away the rebound. And with that, the Oilers are, up to go, are able to go up 4-1. to one. And Pedersen brings it in, makes a nice move there. Feeds it over to Payarvi, and payarvi has got himself the second of the game. And with that, the Oilers win the game 5-1 to one and go up on the series 2-1. to one. First start performance from Mikko Pedersen once again with a goal and two assists, three points, nine shots, and a plus three rating. So with you, as you can see with the playoff tree, 
the Isles are also up 2-1 to one, as well as the Oilers, so the lower seeds have the advantages right now. We'll jump into game four. The Oilers win here. They have a chance to clinch it back in St. Louis, but a loss here would still mean the Oilers would be back at home for one for one more uh, game at the worst. But anyways, here with the Sim, St. Louis will go up one midway through the first. They would end up making it two, then three, and last but not least, four. So four goals in the Sim. Pedersen can't do anything about it, and St. Louis looks like they're going to win this game. But Pedersen has something to say about that because he snipes it and puts it away to make it four to one on a four on four and later on St. Louis though lets in another one Edmonton goes up I mean gets a goal to make it four to two but St. Louis puts away the empty net to make it five to two and that is how the game would end a five two loss not that good of a result at home but uh, the series will be tied two two Pedersen with goal three shots and a plus one rating so not not his fault but as you can see two to two tied in the Western Conference and the Isles are up three to one causing an upset in the Eastern Conference we'll jump into game five here we're back in St. Louis, and this game is going to be all for all the marbles because this series is basically down to a best of three. And to start off here with a couple minutes into the first, Pedersen walks in, shoots, and a nice short side cheese there. Uh, nice goal. That's like an NHL 14 goal, but McDonald would make it 1-1 with that goal while we were on the bench. Later on, though, in the third, a nice passing play by the Blues, and r literally the puck is able to travel across the ice really fast with those passes and Tarasenko puts it away to make it 2-1 and a little couple minutes later it's 3-1 in the sim Edmonton would make it 3-2 in the sim but that is as close as they would get because St. Louis would hold on and they would go up in the series 3-2 so anyways a goal on 7 shots for Pedersen 0 plus minus and uh, so St. Louis is up 3-2 and the Isles are up 3-2 it's 6 seeds are both Battling it out, and they're both one away, one win away from advancing to the Stanley Cup Finals. So we'll jump into Game Six. Must win, win, must win game for the Oilers. And to start off here, St. Louis will get a goal in the Sim. However, that lead would be extended here in the second because Berglund would pick it up and put it away, and Berglund is just clutch in this uh, in this series so far. Anyways, here two nothing. Hensick is going to bounce off a couple checks. Bring it out in front. Dumnik bites the fake and puts it away to make it three to one. Definitely not the uh, what the fans want to see from Edmonton. But Pedersen comes the other way, snipes and he puts it away in classic Pedersen form, three to one. But that's as close as the Oilers would get. Because later on, a couple seconds later, basically a bad call by Pedersen. McDonald feeds it to Berglund and Berglund puts it away for a second of the game to make it four to one. Later on, though. A couple seconds later, again, Pedersen puts it away to make it 4-2. But unfortunately, that's as close as the Oilers would get as the St. Blue, St. Louis Blues hold on for the win and the win in the series. So the Edmonton Oilers are able to last six games. Definitely played uh, a great playoffs. Uh, playoffs. Uh, not much people didn't. Even, not much people even expected them to make it this far to the playoffs. And with a team led by Nuge, Taylor Hall. Jordan Everly and Miko Pedersen, as well as, as well as Devin Dubnik in the net. They are definitely on their way to becoming a uh, pretty good team. So this season ends for Edmonton as both disappointment and excitement. Disappointed since they were so close to making it to the finals. And as you can see, they did lose to the eventual champion. But exciting because they do have potential. And that is one thing every hockey fan wants their team to have. A great, a great young team is definitely something to be excited about, and the Oilers fans will be excited about this. So St. Louis wins the wins the Stanley Cup uh, champions in six games. Pedersen finishes with 31 points, 26 goals, five assists, and in 16 games played in these playoffs. So definitely a uh, great performance. Led the team and the NHL by far. And let's take a look at the award winners. As you as you know, St. Louis does win the Stanley Cup. Uh, not sure if that's their first in franchise history, but St. Louis does win it, and a surprise there. New York Rangers win the President's Trophy. Clarence S. Campbell Bowl goes to St. Louis Blues. And as you know, the uh, Prince of Wales Trophy will go to the New York Islanders. Art Ross Trophy goes to Alexander Ovechkin for leading the league in points. And he is definitely having a good season, as he also wins the Hart Memorial Trophy, uh, voted as the MVP. James Norris Memorial Trophy goes to Alex Pietrangelo from the Stanley Cup winning Blues. So he is definitely a step up in the right direction in this season. 
Uh, the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy goes to Marion Hosa for the best sportsmanship and gentlemanly con conduct. So a nice award for uh, Hosa there. Calder Memorial Trophy goes to Miko Pedersen. So he wins the best rookie of the year. It wasn't that surprising. Maybe if Ainge wasn't injured, it would have been a little bit of a closer race. But definitely a nice award there. Consmite Trophy goes to Patrick Berlin, who torched us in the uh, Western Conference Finals. And he probably did the same to the Islanders in the Stanley Cup Finals. And the next trophy is the Vezina Trophy, which pa Pecorine ends up winning. First uh, trophy for him. And voted as the best goalkeeper, so the National Predators do have a keeper in him. William M. Jennings Trophy is shared by Ryan Miller and Jonas Enroth of the Buffalo Sabres. So they did make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, didn't win the Stanley Cup, but they do get a nice trophy there for them. Uh, Robin Regeer, also from the Buffalo Sabres, wins the Bill Masterson Memorial Trophy for perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. And Frank J. Salky Trophy goes to Pavel Datsyuk, a player that has won this award numerous times as the uh, best defensive forward in the game. A nice award there for um, Pavel Datsyuk and the Ted Lindsay Award goes to who else but Alexander Ovechkin voted as the MVP by the uh, play NHL PA so the players, the fans, the media, everyone thinks uh, Alex Ovechkin was the best player of the year and Miko Pedersen gets the Maurice Richard Trophy for with 59 goals so with that, that is the end of Miko Pedersen but for NHL 13 it will be back in NHL 14 I am planning on adding a little bit of a video storyline, kind of like throwing Sims or something like that. So just so you can see the life, not just the gameplay, and uh, like not the backstory. I know I kind of, uh, after the backstory, kind of toned down, but I know I will uh, bring back at least like a storyline throughout all of NHL 14. I'm looking to have that Miko Pedersen, Alexi Vigno, their careers finished till they're like 35 at the end of NHL 14. So it will be back. I'll hopefully have it up once the uh, first week of NHL 14 is is uh, up sometime during that time and once again hope you guys enjoyed basically the first year of Mikael Pedersen the uh, phenom superstar and I really hope you guys uh, want to see more of this in NHL 14 I'm definitely excited with the live the life features although they didn't really live up to my expectations but it does look like a pretty sweet uh, addition to what I think is already a uh, fun be a pro. I mean, some people think be a pro is boring, but I feel like if you add a storyline and you try to keep to it, uh, it actually gets pretty interesting. So with that, Miko Pedersen's first season is in the books. He's won the Calder as the best rookie. He's won the Richard, and he's already set his sights on not just the MVP of the league, not just the Hart, not just the Ted Lindsay, but also the Stanley Cup in the next couple of years. So with that... That's the last episode of NHL 13 Be a Pro. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, once again, I will see you guys later. Peace.